guys and welcome back to my channel. I was undecided what to vlog this week. I'm always asking on Instagram the vlogs you want to see. This is a subject that's come up quite a few times. Quite a few people have messaged me, emailing me. I feel like this is a vlog that I've been avoiding for a long time. It's really personal to me and I find it really difficult to talk about. I'm quite open with it to my close friends and family. To speak so openly about it out there on social media is difficult. I know I put a lot of my life already on Instagram, social media, but this is like very, very personal. I feel like this video will really help someone out there and even if it just helps one person, that's fine. I'm not uploading this video necessarily for someone with an eating disorder, although I'm not saying it won't help them, but I wanted to upload this video for, for those people really close to someone with an eating disorder, like family, boyfriend, friends, so you can kind of have an understanding of what people with an eating disorder actually go through and what's going through their brain and the best way to go about it. You can tell my voice is like really shaky because this is like so difficult for me, you have no idea. Oh. Anyway, and I'm really bad at explaining things so it's probably gonna be one jumbled mess. Four years ago it started and I was like, 21? I think so anyway, maybe I was 20. They call like it a trigger, something triggers it. I've heard a lot of people say that. For me, I'm not saying that isn't true. That probably is completely true for some people. But for me, I don't actually know what triggered it. it. came about, I was training professionally as a dancer at the time. I was in like my second year, going into my third year. If you are in the dance industry or you know about the dan dance industry, it's a very competitive business. Business based a lot on what you look like, body image. So this could have been a trigger for me, I don't know. Maybe that was my trigger and the stress and the knowledge of going out into the industry and it's gonna be crazy and it's gonna be stressful and this is what I took it out on, I'm not sure. I was heading into my final year, I started to track what I was eating. I started writing it down what I was eating and how many calories it consisted of and then I started cutting it down and down and down to which point I was barely eating anything. And as well as that, I was running every day and I was doing hot yoga every day and I was training as a dancer. So I was doing a lot physically and I was just not fueling my body at all. So I rapidly lost a lot of weight in such a short space of time. So throughout my final year of training, people really started to notice it. I'd had comments made by my friends. Teachers had brought me in for a meeting to discuss with me, like, is there something going on? What's important to know is someone with an eating disorder is completely blind to an eating disorder. No matter how much thinner you get, no matter how much you change, someone with an eating disorder just does not see that at all. I was completely blinded. So every meal I had, I was paranoid, like, is the butter on the bread? Has it been cooked in oil? To the point where I stopped going out for meals because I didn't trust what people were cooking with. I didn't trust how many calories were in it. I didn't trust myself that I wasn't gonna put weight on by eating it. It's constant mind games with yourself. So my social life went downhill as well in that final year. I didn't want to go out, I didn't want to socialise because I felt like that would be eating or drinking. At which point I was living away from home. So when my parents came down and watched one of my shows, it made them immediately seriously worried because I had drastically lost weight since they'd last seen me. I have to add as well that I'm kind of small anyway, like I have a petite frame. It looked even worse because I was small, if you know what I mean. When my parents had been, mum actually forced me to go and see a doctor she was not gonna leave me alone until I'd gone and seen a doctor and asked for his advice. I think it was to settle her mind and to just know that I'm gonna get some help or I'm not sure, I think it was just kind of like peace of mind. But in my head, I was just gonna go and see the doctor and then she'd just leave me alone about it so then I can carry on. So I went to see a doctor, yeah, he told me I was underweight, I need to stop running, I need to stop exercising, I need to start eating a lot more. Of course I didn't listen to him, because in my mind, again, there's nothing wrong with me whatsoever. Towards the end of that year, I had a really hard time with graduating from the professional training and going out into the industry. Obviously I was severely underweight, so I was not getting work, was not getting on to the agencies that I wanted to get on. Still, in my head, I was fine. After I graduated, I moved back home and everything went crazy. It actually destroyed my family. So when I moved home, it really like tore my family apart. I was weighing food, I was weighing myself every day. Slowly they could see me like deteriorating. I was just skin and bones at this point. I was not in a good mental state. 
I'd sit in a dark room all day, every day. I wouldn't want to go out, I wouldn't want to work, I just didn't want to do anything, I just wanted to be on my own in a really dark room. It's crazy to think about because it's just so not me. When you know me as a person, I'm up, I'm out. As soon as the sun comes up in the morning, I'm awake. I need everybody to understand that this horrible, horrible mental disease completely blinds you and depresses you all at the same time. So you consistently feel like there's nothing wrong whatsoever, but you are severely depressed. So this mental state is just hell. All I can say is it's just complete hell. At this point, I was living at home, I was weighing everything, I was, was weighing myself every morning. I was also still exercising as well. I would try and run, I would try and go to the gym, but couldn't really do much because I was so weak, so, so weak. And then I would sit in a dark room and just want to be on my own. I was also making myself sick. A lot of what I did eat, I was just throwing back up. And this whole big, dark, black cloud that had taken over my brain had just destroyed everything. I'd also been with my boyfriend Josh for how many years? Maybe three years at that point. I don't know why I've not mentioned him yet. I don't know whether he'd want me to mention this. I don't even know whether he'd, he'd, he's going to watch this video because it was a really hard time for him as well. And it also really destroyed our relationship basically. I didn't want to see him, didn't want to be around him the same as I didn't want to be around anyone else. So it really hurt him a lot. So. So, I will never forgive myself for hurting my family and my boyfriend so much. It was awful on them. Oh, I did not want to get upset for God's sake, Olivia. Oh. So yeah, but I ended up doing, obviously. When it got to a point where Josh couldn't take it anymore, and he just cut off from me. He was like, get some help or I, can't, I just can't do it anymore. It was too much for him. It got to a crazy point where I was having panic attacks. I couldn't breathe. When I'd moved home, my parents made me go to the doctors again. Actually, my mum went to the doctors first and spoke to the doctor privately without me. And the doctor said she wanted a letter off me explaining the situation and then to go in with this letter. I don't know whether every doctor does that or that was just like some sort of way to get me in. So I'd written a letter and I remember it said, I'd literally wrote like, my mum's pretty much crazy, there's nothing wrong with me. And I um, don't know why she's been like this. And straight away my doctor read the letter and submitted my application to go to the Priory, basically. So I think I was put on to a waiting list for the Priory. I'm not 100% certain on these facts because that whole period was such like a blur. I don't know whether I've tried to block it all out or I wasn't consuming enough food to like remember things, I don't know. So it took about six weeks before I was actually able to go to the Priory. So during which point everything crazy had happened, I finally checked into the Priory and it was just the day centre. But when I went to the Priory it was awful. Not the Priory itself, just for me um, as someone with um, a mental illness an eating disorder. I had to strip off all of your clothes completely. So you weren't hiding anything and then they weighed you, checked your BMI. And then you would have to go through counselling with other people with eating disorders. Now I remember the first thing I thought was, wow, all these people are so much thinner than me. I need to get even thinner. I felt like I was big there. Because we were all so small, it felt like I was big. When you first got there you had to select a meal. Now depending on how long you'd been checked into the Priory, depended on what meal you were getting. Say I hadn't eaten any carbs for about a year, maybe longer. So if I'd have had all them carbs all at once it would have probably have made me really poorly. So you have you have to pick a meal from a category. You have to eat that meal before you can leave the building. So you cannot go home until you've eaten every last bit of that meal. Half a piece of toast and like a yoghurt or like a plate of fruit with some peanut butter and it was so difficult to eat. I remember I had half a sandwich or something like that and it was so difficult. After that day I'd been to the Priory, I felt like I'd achieved something and I was getting somewhere. I went to the Priory for, for I'd say six weeks and then I was finally checked out. 
I would say that's pretty impressive to uh, recover so quickly. When I say recover so quickly, I'll get into that later because I wouldn't ever say I was recovered. It is that I started to get better at the Priory because I started being able to eat the food and then just leave. It, it got quicker. I actually have some notes from the counselling sessions from when I first went there. So I'm gonna put them in the end of the vlog so you can read over them and just see that mental frame I was at. I've called this vlog living with an eating disorder because I feel like, I don't know if it's different for anybody else, but I feel pretty strongly about it. That when once you've had an eating disorder, I feel like it will always forever be with you. I don't think it ever leaves you. I just feel like you'll learn to control it. I feel like there's always something in the back of my mind that makes me think, should I eat that? Even though, even though I have to say, now I'm completely fine, I'm completely in control, I'm completely on my way, I'm really healthy, I don't count my calories, I don't weigh myself, I've refused to weigh myself, refused to count calories, and if someone reads the calories out on something, I'm like, please can you not read them, else I won't eat it like so I feel like it's still with you it could come back at any point I do know that but I have learned to control it and it's like in the back of my mind and it's got a massive fence around it and it's completely controlled I think I've learned to be a lot happier with my body I can't change it and now looking back I know how awful my life was then I just won't go back there someone's asked me what is the worst thing about an eating disorder I would say the worst thing about an eating disorder is the fact that not only do you have to live with it in the back of your mind forever, is that the people who are closest around you at that time will never forget. Still to this day, Josh for example is like, why have you not finished that? Or are you not going to eat them potatoes? And I'm like, yeah I'm just full. <laughs> Even my mum was like, you look like you've lost a bit of weight, are you okay? Like, I and I cannot blame them whatsoever ask the opposite as well the best thing about an eating disorder is no one will ever ever make a fat joke about you if you're at the stage where you've got an eating disorder but you know you've got an eating disorder and you're trying to figure it out please message me comment below and I'm so happy to talk about it we always think that it's easier to speak to someone who's experienced it and who has learned to control it for those people who are close to someone with an eating disorder my advice for you is try and support them as best you can. The worst thing to do is get angry at them. The best thing to do is try and understand and understand that they're not gonna get help until they want it themselves. I only wanted the help in the end because I had nothing left going for me. I'd ruined everything. At which point I knew that I needed to get some help because it was either that or just not go on anymore. So you just gotta sit back and pull through it as hard as it is and as hard as it is to watch it's that person that needs to decide to change something i really hope that this video helps someone out there it was really difficult for me i feel like it's one of the hardest things i've ever done in my life i'm not even gonna lie apart from learning to control my actual eating disorder but to film it and talk about it really really difficult so i'm really hoping that one person out there has got something from it Please share this video, please like let it reach as many people as possible so I didn't just do it all for nothing <laughs> and go through all that for nothing. Please share it, please like it, please comment any feelings you have below. Please don't put any nasty things either because you just can't cope. <laughs> I'm gonna do a happy like really like positive video next week, I promise. Bye!